Hello freediving family, here are my five key tips for advanced freedivers. If you haven't already clicked or tapped the notifications button right down there next to subscribe, now is probably a good time to do that. These tips come mostly from teaching my advanced freediving courses and what I see my students do time and time again. I'm also including a bonus tip at the end of the video, which is probably the most important tip, or at least the tip that will allow you to progress the most. Number one, work on your free fall position. When you're diving, the pressure of the water compresses the air that's in your lungs, and eventually, the air will be so small that you'll no longer float, but you will sink. Freedivers take advantage of this, and they allow themselves to sink. This allows them to get to deeper and deeper depths without expending any effort. The position that you free fall in is incredibly important. Holding a streamlined body position will allow you to move through the water much faster, but it also tends to have a huge effect on how a person feels mentally. In other videos that I've made, which I'm assuming you have watched, I speak about the relationship between the body and the mind when we're breath holding. How it is very difficult to control the mind, but not as difficult to control the body. If you're mentally stressed, it's really natural for your body to respond to that stress and to tense up or to lock up. It's a normal part of our defense mechanism. Then, once your mind registers that your body is stressed out and tense, it stresses itself more. It is a vicious cycle. Now, it's very difficult to relax the mind once it does become nervous or stressed, but it is not as difficult to relax the body or ideally to never allow the body to be tense or stressed in the first place, even if you are feeling it mentally. So back to our free fall. During the free fall phase of the dive, which is quite a mouthfeel to say, <laughs> is when most free divers crack mentally and they will turn early and not reach their target depth. Practicing that free fall position and learning how to be incredibly comfortable in that position is going to allow you to remain more comfortable and more at ease in that key phase of your dive. So just make sure you spend a good amount of time actually perfecting and working on your free fall. This is a classic free fall position. Oh my, look who that is. Torso straight, lower back disengaged, arms by my side, pelvis and knees loose, disengaged but not bent over, and ankles together. Number two, don't overtrain your CO2 tables. I see a lot of divers finish their freediving courses, they're super pumped, they get stuck into training. It's awesome to see, but the thing about freediving training is, it's very easy to do it to excess and to burn out. Train maximum three times per week. And going for a dive counts as training as well, so don't train at the pool three nights a week and then go for a dive on the weekend. That counts as four sessions, all right? This is real life. In short, dealing with the discomfort of longer and longer breath holds too much can really wear a person down and you'll just stop wanting to go to training. You'll stop wanting to train. I also see divers attempting tables and exercises that are just too challenging for them. And this includes myself. I do this all the time and I haven't learnt yet. Training tables are not meant to break a person. They're meant to be a little bit challenging but always achievable. In freediving, slow and steady always, always wins the race. And if you keep your tables manageable, if you don't constantly push and push yourself, you will have a constant steady progression. As opposed to someone who pushes themselves all the time, they will have fast bursts of progression, but then they will almost certainly plateau and not progress or get better or improve their PB for long periods of time. Number three, there are different types of finning. In your freediving courses, you will have been taught to fin from the hip, driving from the hip, with slight tension in the knees, so that your foot is always the furthest point in front and behind of your leg. Now this is the most efficient way to get from point A to point B, but once you're at point B, that 
power finning isn't really needed. This is when you can shift to a bicycle kick or a soft gentle kick to conserve energy. Also when you are on your way down there does need to be a gradient to your finning. We don't just power down and then all of a sudden stop and start free falling. We start finning strong in the beginning to cut through all that positive buoyancy and then the deeper you go the softer you fin until eventually you don't need to fin at all. Ideally you want to keep the same descent speed for your entire dive, well at least for your entire descent. <laughs> in the beginning you'll need to fin strong but then when you're not so positively buoyant you can fin softer and still maintain the same speed. Then eventually you can stop finning entirely and you will maintain the same speed. A pretty good descent speed is anything in between 0.8 and 1 meter per second. Usually you'll reach the point in which you can start your free fall but still hold the same speed at anywhere between 15 and 20 meters on the way down. The same thing goes as we're on our way back up. We fin strongest at the bottom with all that negative buoyancy weighing on top of us and then we fin softer, 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 softer the closer we get to the surface especially as we start to become positively buoyant again. By the way if this video is helpful if you are enjoying it you should probably consider subscribing because I do make videos like this all the time. Number four don't set unrealistic goals. Progress slows down the deeper you go and the longer you hold your breath. Because within two days, you can go from never having free dived before to diving to 20 meters. It is normal that you would think that that rate of progression would continue, but it just doesn't. <laughs> the deeper you dive or the longer your breath holds become, the smaller the increments of progress are going to be. It took me one whole year to go from diving from 90 meters to 100 meters. And this year, 2017, it took me one whole year to go from diving to 105 meters to go to 106 meters, a whole year of training. So just be aware as you get more and more advanced that you will always be progressing and getting better. It's just that the increments are smaller and you're gonna have to be happier with a few meters instead of a whole lot of them. Number five. Now number five is very important. Revisit your breathe up. Everyone, I mean everyone, when they first start free diving will have the tendency to hyperventilate. We all do it, it's just natural. We don't start out with a lot of control over our breathing when we first begin free diving. And so our natural tendency is to breathe a little bit deeper and a little bit faster than we need to because it does make the actual dives easier. Now that you have more control, Pay attention to the way that you're breathing up and make sure that you are not hyperventilating. If you do need to revisit what hyperventilation is or to get a better clarification, I have made a video about it so you can go and watch that. After a while, our breathe ups do become habit and so it is important for us to make sure that our habit isn't hyperventilating. With the deeper dives that you'll be doing now and with the longer breath holds that you'll be doing now, it is really, really important. All right, now for the bonus tip. This is the tip which will most likely help you progress the most. Work on the three different frenzel positions. The T position, the K position, and the H position. I talk about these different positions in my How to Frenzel tutorial and they are essential. Now a T frenzel is the strongest because it has the most air behind the tongue when you do perform it. But because you are required to have more air in your mouth to do it, you won't be able to do it as deep because you're going to have to pull that air up from your lungs and at greater depths, that may not be possible. In order to perform a K frenzel, you will require less air and in order to perform a H frenzel, you will require even less. So you see what I'm getting at here? If you are reaching a specific depth or certain depths, and you're finding that it is hard to equalize, either you can't equalize or you're not able to bring any air up to equalize with, it's because you are most likely 
doing a T or a K frenzel. And what you need to be doing down there is a H frenzel because it requires less air in the mouth to perform it. Anyway, freediving family, if you do have any important comments that I have missed, please write them down in the comments. A lot of learning happens right down there in the comments section. And for the newbies here, welcome! We are an international supportive family of freedivers and I will see you in the water somewhere. I'm Adam Stern, I hold my breath and dive really deep. Don't forget to subscribe and join the freediving family. Also, check out this video because I think you might like it. Otherwise, this is the most recent video that I've posted to my channel.